Our BHAT test suite requires that we can post data into our API in order to set up the background of any test that we run. Now this is somewhat unusual and not something that I'd actually advocate in the real world. However, for our purposes, I believe it works quite well and it forces us to get to the implementation, which is the fun part, as quickly as possible. So before we can send in any data, we need to define what that data is, in our case, our entity, how we can process and validate the incoming data, in our case, via a Symfony form, and how we can save that data off to the database, in our case, that will be with Doctrine. So given this, there are three things that we'll need immediately. We're going to need the album entity, the album type, which is our Symfony form, and Doctrine's entity manager. The album entity itself is almost identical to that from our basic Symfony 4 JSON API implementation. We just won't need to implement JSON serializable. Instead, we'll let the Symfony serializer take care of serializing our album entity to JSON. By making use of the maker bundle, we can make the entity class stub and get the associated repository class generated for us for free. Let's do that now with the Bing console make entity, passing in album as the name of our entity. We'll need to add in our class properties, so that's title, release date, and track count. And we're also going to add in the validation constraints. Again, this is almost identical to our previous implementation, so you can pretty much just copy paste if you've already done this before. If you do copy paste, then remove the implements JSON serializable, and optionally also remove the JSON serialized method. As mentioned, we'll also need the album type, which is the form that represents our album entity. Now I'm gonna use the maker bundle to generate a starting point here, but then I'm just gonna copy paste my previous example as it's going to be identical. You can find all of this in the show notes. And one really nice thing about the maker bundle as of Symphony 4.0.6, I believe, is that if we pass in the name of the entity, for which we want to make our form, the maker bundle is able to look at the entity and determine the fields that should be in that form. Now for the raw Symphony 4 implementation, we went ahead and added in things like the form field type and then custom options for our release date and track count fields. We also added in the default options of allowing extra fields. And we saw that this might be useful if, for example, in the context of a put operation where our API consumer sends in an object with the extra field of ID, which wouldn't be a property on our form and would therefore trigger a 400 error. We also discussed that we didn't need CSRF protection in this case, as the whole point of our API is to allow incoming data submissions from more than just our own domain. If you'd like to know more about any of this, please see the show notes where we link to a video that goes into this in more depth. In order to get access to the entity manager, we'll simply inject it into our album controller via the constructor. Now, unlike in Symphony 2 or Symphony 3, with Symphony 4's auto wiring, we don't need to do any further configuration or setup. Just inject what you want and 90% of the time you're done. So this concludes all the prerequisite tasks needed to allow us to start our Symphony 4 with FOSRES bundle implementation. We're going to start off by creating the form, passing in our album type as the form that we wish to create and a new album entity instance as the object that we want our form submission process to populate. Now that we have a form, we can call its internal submit method. And when working with the raw Symphony 4 implementation, we would first have had to have done the JSON decode. Typically with two arguments, we would use request get content as the first argument and then true as the second argument. In other words, turn the incoming raw JSON data into a PHP associative array. Now notice that we didn't have to do the JSON decode. This process is implicitly taken care of for us by FOSRES bundle's body listener. Let's take a more in-depth look at how this works. So we'll need to browse into the vendor directory under Friends of Symphony in the REST bundle. And specifically, we want to go into the event listener directory and look at the body listener. So as the directory structure implies, the body listener is an event listener. And the event that it listens for specifically is the kernel.request event. So the kernel.request event is the very first event that's going to be dispatched whenever the handle method is called on the HTTP kernel. Again, we can see this for ourselves if we look inside the public directory and find our index.php front controller. You can see the request will be handled. And if we keep following this through, go to the handle method. And again, handle raw. The kernel.request event is, as mentioned, the very first thing that's dispatched. And we can double check that by checking out the value of the constant, which as I've just said, is kernel.request. Now again, you may be wondering how we are subscribed to this. So if we take a look in the resources directory under config and see the body listener, we've got our service definition here and we're tagged as a kernel.event listener. The event that we're interested in is kernel.request. 
And when we hear about that specific event, we'll call the method on kernel request. Okay, so back to the body listener. The first check that we make is whether the body listener is enabled in this zone. Now zones are a more advanced concept, but if for example you had a HTML type site available on the root of your domain and your API was on slash API or something along those lines, you may not want the body listener or various other listeners to interfere with the site when it's in HTML mode. You would only probably want FOSRES bundles, body listener and so on to intervene with the request when working with the slash API routes. As I say, it's a more advanced concept. It's not really something that we need to worry about at this stage. Next, we check if the request is decodable. So let's check out the implementation for is decodable. And we're only going to try and decode post, put, patch and delete methods. Next, we need to determine the format. So the format is going to be like HTML or JSON or XML or something like that. In our case, it's going to be JSON. Remembering back, we explicitly disabled the format placeholder. So we can check this. If we look at request get format, you can see it's going to look for the value of that format placeholder. So that's not going to work. So we've go back then it's going to try and get the format from our content type. And that's why we always send in our request with the content type of application JSON. It shouldn't matter anyway, because we have a default format set, which is JSON also. So once we've figured out that we're working with JSON and we've gone ahead and got the content, which will just be our raw JSON string, then we determine if we can actually decode that JSON. Now there are some pre-configured decoders. And again, if we look inside body listener XML, we can see we've got the decoder of JSON, JSON to form XML. By default, the JSON and XML decoders will be enabled. Again, you don't need to just take my word for this. You can either look in the default configuration reference or we can take a look in the dependency injection folder under configuration. Whilst this file is quite big, if we do a find on FOSRES decoder JSON, you'll see that the default values for the configured decoders under the body listener are JSON and XML. Okay, you may be thinking, well, what what's actually happening with the JSON decoder is basically exactly what we were already doing. It's just we don't need to do it manually. And likewise, there's one for XML. So again, we're getting quite a few things open at the top here now. Let's try and get back to where we were, the body listener. So if the incoming request body isn't empty, then try and decode it. And if we've got an array, then on the request request, which is interesting because that's what we're going to use, then set a new parameter bag containing the decoded data. And so this is why from any of our front end controllers, we'll be able to just call request request all and get access to the decoded data. Next, and typically for a Symfony form submission, we check if the submitted data is considered to be valid. If the form is invalid, then all we do is return our form instance wrapped in a view. Now with our current FOSREST YAML configuration, this won't yet display as expected, but we'll fix this shortly. With FOSREST bundle simply allowing us to return the form instance when the data inside is in an invalid state is a really time-saving and useful concept. We actually saw part of this when we went through the raw Symfony 4 approach, where we borrowed or slash stole a large part of this implementation. We will come back to this concept towards the end of this section, where we will specifically look at handling form errors. Now, if our form is valid, then it's business as usual. This is a new entity, so we need to persist or manage it. And the entity can be found by using the forms get data method. Once we've persisted our entity, as usual, we want to flush or save our changes to the database. One of the really nice parts about FOSRES bundle is it can work with more than just JSON. We might wish to send an XML and by using the handle view method, all we need to do is work with arrays and FOSRES bundle will take care of serializing this data to whatever format the front end or API consumer wishes to work with. Of course, we could lock our API down to just JSON or just XML if that's your thing, or we could support both or more and so on. Now, given that we can work with more than just one response type, we need to use the view abstraction if we want to take advantage of this. Now, as a heads up, you could just return a JSON response here. Maybe it'd be easier. If all you want to support is JSON, then why bother with a whole extra layer of view abstraction? I'm going to go with the view setup because it's an interesting and powerful part of FOSRES bundle, but you can entirely bypass it if you don't want or need the extra functionality. Whatever your preference on the response, the good news is that's it for our initial implementation. So if we run the BHAT tests now, having tagged just the can add a new album scenario, then things fail. Now the problem here is configuration. We haven't told FOSRES bundle that all we care about is JSON. Let's get on to fixing this in the very next video.